Good afternoon everyone. Let us start. Remember we have been learning uh, chapter 11 water in the atmosphere. Today we shall learn about forms of condensation. Yesterday we discussed about humidity, evaporation and condensation processes. So let us continue. Today we are going to learn about different forms of condensation. See here, after condensation the water vapor or moisture in the atmosphere attacks one of the following forms dew, frost, fog, and the clouds. So these are the four important forms of condensation. And these forms of condensation can be classified on the basis of temperature and location. Now let us uh, learn uh, about these forms of condensation in detail. So the first important uh, form of condensation is a dew and uh, yeah, you are very much uh, familiar with uh, this form of condensation and uh, here we have also one photograph okay see here drops of water on the blades of grass this is what I call dew okay so all of you have seen it let us read when the moisture is deposited in the form of water droplets on cooler surfaces of solid objects rather than nuclei in the air above and the surface such as stone, grass, blades, and the plant leaf, it is known as dew. So when water vapor is deposited in the form of water droplets on the cooler surfaces like uh, these leaves of trees, then uh, blades of grass, then stones, iron seed, electric pores, okay and that kind of condensation is known as a dew and the ideal conditions for its formation are clear sky calm air then high relative humidity and cool and long nights okay the factors favorable for the formation of dew are clear sky so nighttime sky must be very clear no cloudiness Okay, should be there. Then calm air. Air should not be moved. Then high relative humidity. That uh, about that, uh, the air must be uh, okay uh, near saturation. The relative humidity must be high. Then cool and the long nights, and that is why uh, these uh, winter nights are favorable for the formation of dew because the nights are longer uh, in the winter. And for the formation of dew, it is necessary that the dew point is above the freezing point. Okay, so the temperature may be above freezing point uh, for the uh, formation of dew. So this is about dew. Uh, remember the factors. Okay, and about uh, this uh, dew. So I have shown the photographs also and uh, you have also uh, also all already uh, seen uh, dew in the early morning also. And next we have uh, this another form of condensation that is frost. Okay. So frost forms on cold surfaces when condensation takes place below freezing point that is zero degree celsius that is the dew point is at or below the freezing point 
dew point uh, in the previous lesson we have learned about dew point so this is the temperature at which a given parcel of air is saturated okay uh, that is called dew point and uh, for the formation of frost air temperature must be at or below freezing point that is below the uh, zero degree Celsius and about the uh, this uh, ideal condition it is almost the same with the formation of dew okay but remember frosts are formed uh, by sublimation process okay when the temperature of the air goes below zero degree Celsius water vapor in the air directly turns into ice particles okay uh, on the leaves of uh, these trees, then uh, blades of grass, electric pores, and so on. See, the excess moisture uh, is deposited in the form of minute ice crystals instead of water droplets. Sublimation process, okay. And the ideal conditions for the formation of white frost are the same as th those of the formation of dew except that the air temperature must be below at or below freezing point that the air temperature must be zero or below zero degrees celsius other factors remain the same with those of the formation of dew like clear sky then calm air high relative humidity cool and long nights okay and we have some photographs of frost here so this is a photograph of uh, showing frost okay see crystals of ice on the leaves of uh, these trees and we have some more uh, photographs so this is another photograph showing uh, this frost okay So this is another one, see here, ice crystals, okay, on the leaves of grass and trees. So any question from your side about frost and dew? No, sir. Okay, then let us proceed. So next important uh, form of condensation is uh, fog and mist and this one also we are uh, familiar okay uh, it occurs uh, mainly in the uh, this early morning sometimes in the evening also okay so let us read when the temperature of the air mass of an air mass containing a large quantity of water vapor falls all of a sudden Condensation takes place within itself on fine dust particles. Okay, uh, so when the temperature of uh, air mass, air mass you know is a thick layer of air, okay, uh, falls, the temperature of the air mass falls, then water vapor in the air directly uh, condense on the uh, this uh, condensation nuclei that is dust particle on the surface of dust particles on the surface of soot particles okay and salt particles what we call hygroscopic uh, nuclei okay and about that also we have learned yesterday and uh, in the previous lessons also and so fog actually fog is a cloud with its base at or very near to the ground that means the formation of fog is almost the same with those of the cloud and we can say that uh, fog, fog is a cloud okay uh, which is formed nearby the surface of the earth and because of the fog and the mist the visibility uh, becomes poor or zero when we have uh, this fog on the surface or mist okay then visibility is uh, very very poor and in urban and industrial centers uh, smoke provide plenty of uh, this uh, nuclei that is condensed nuclei and which help in the formation of fog and uh, 
a niche okay and uh, such a uh, condition when fog is mixed with uh, smog it is described as smog actually uh, this is very harmful to uh, human health and is a kind of pollution we can say okay when uh, this uh, fog when a fog is uh, mixed with a uh, smog okay it produce a uh, smog very dangerous one okay very dangerous uh, and weather uh, phenomenon and uh, it is uh, sometimes uh, okay lead to it leads to uh, this death also that means uh, it causes uh, this health hazard and the only difference so about the difference between the uh, mist and the fog the only difference between mist and the fog is that mist contains more moisture than a fog that means mist contains more water droplets than the fog in other words we can say fog contains more dust particles and that is why visibility is uh, again low lower okay than the mist visibility of fog is lower than the uh, mist because it contains more dust particles whereas mist contain uh, more water droplets and in mist is a uh, nuclei contains a thicker layer of moisture as mentioned earlier and the mists are frequent over the mountains as uh, rising warm air up, uh, up the slopes meets a cold surface okay when warm air rises up the slope of a mountain okay a mist is occurred when uh, warm air contacts with the cold surface of the mountain mist is occurred and uh, you know that on top of the mountain slope of the mountain air is very clean and clear and that is why okay we have mist we have more water droplets and the uh, forks are drier uh, then means means uh, it contain less uh, dust uh, less water droplets and uh, they are prevalent where warm currents of air comes in contact with cold currents when warm air current contacts with cool air current then forks are occurred okay in short forks are mini clouds okay with in which condensation uh, take place around uh, these nuclei provided by dust, smog, and salt particles. And about fork and mist, we have some photographs, although you are familiar with it. So this is a photograph uh, showing uh, this fork. Okay, here visibility is low. And we have some more photographs. So this is another photograph showing fog. And we have different types of fog, okay? So this is another type of fog. Uh, foam uh, over a water body, maybe a river lag. Then so this is a photograph showing mist okay in the mountainous area here visibility is high okay higher than the uh, fog and uh, so this is another photograph showing mist okay in the mountainous area see here these are mist okay so these are some photographs and uh, next we have another form of condensation known as cloud so before we read uh, do you have uh, questions are you clear about dew frost and the fog yes. okay if you don't have questions so let us proceed uh, next we have cloud you know cloud is a mass of minute that is small okay water droplets or tiny crystals of ice formed by condensation 
of water vapor in free air at considerable elevations okay uh, form at high altitudes clouds are mass of minute water droplets or tiny ice crystals formed by condensation process of water vapor in the free air that means on the surface of the dust particles soil particles okay and as the clouds are formed at uh, uh, some height over the surface of the earth, they attack various saps. So I think you may be seeing different types of cloud, different saps of cloud in the sky. And uh, so these are due to, uh, okay, due to uh, this uh, height or sometimes due to the mixing, okay, of the warm year, cold year. So different factors are there, okay. So according to their height, according to the height of the cloud, then expands the size, then density, then transparency or opaqueness. Clouds are grouped under four types, okay, under four families. Can be grouped under four families, four types. Those are shearers, cumulus, stratus and nimbus. Okay, so let us continue. So the first uh, important high cloud is cirrus. So cirrus clouds are formed at high altitudes that is between 8,000 to 12,000 meter. That is uh, cirrus clouds are formed between 8 kilometer to 12 kilometer. And uh, cirrus clouds are thin and a detached cloud having a feathery appearance. Actually it looks like a tail of a horse and they are always uh, white in color okay cirrus clouds are always white in color and they are uh, these uh, feathery in appearance just like uh, tails of a horse so we have uh, one photograph see when you see such type of cloud in the sky at high altitude so this is known as cirrus cloud okay so this is the cirrus cloud Actually, it indicates uh, that uh, the strong wind is blowing, okay, at the higher altitudes. And next we have another type of cloud that is uh, cumulus. And cumulus cloud look like a cotton wool. It looks like a cotton wool or it looks like a, cu a cauliflower, okay, cauliflower and that they are generally formed at height of 4,000 to 7,000 meter that is uh, formed between 4 to 7 kilometers above the ground and uh, they exist in patches and they can be seen scattered here and there when these clouds are uh, seen in patches and are also scattered here and there and they have a flat base okay they have a flat base and the flat base means, uh, see here, uh, let us say uh, this is the uh, cumulus cloud and here the base is flat like this. Okay. Actually, if you see uh, that one or two uh, cumulus clouds in the sky, it indicates a fair weather. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, some photographs of uh, this cumulus so these clouds are known as cumulus okay most of the time here it has sub boundary but sometimes uh, the boundary may be also fractured okay such type of uh, cloud is known as uh, cumulus fractus if it it if it doesn't have uh, this sub boundary okay and I uh, say uh, one more photograph okay so this is another photograph showing a cumulus cloud here the base is flat okay and it looks like uh, this cotton ball or uh, cotton wool or this cauliflower color is white okay most of the time Next, we have uh, the fourth, a uh, third type of uh, cloud that is uh, stratus. As their name implies, actually stratus derived from the word strata, means layers, okay. 
and as their name implies, uh, these are layered clouds covering large portion of the sky. Sometimes it covers the whole sky, okay. This type of cloud covers the whole sky and it is thin also. And uh, these clouds are generally formed either due to loss of heat or mixing of air masses with different temperatures. When warm and cold air masses mixed uh, together uh, at a time uh, stratus clouds are formed or stratus clouds are formed when uh, this, there is loss of heat okay, in the atmosphere. And uh, when we have uh, this stratus cloud in the sky, uh, there may be a slight or light rainfall. Okay? And uh, see here we have a photograph of stratus. See. It is covering the whole sky and this is what we call stratus. Okay, this is stratus opactus. Opactus means a light cannot pass through in this case. Sometimes if it is very thin then you may see a uh, rim of the sun also. Okay. And next we have uh, nimbus. Okay, so it implies rain. And uh, nimbus clouds are black or dark gray in color and uh, they form at middle levels very near to the surface okay these are low clouds of the earth and they are extremely dense and opaque that light cannot pass through uh, to the rays of the sun and uh, sometimes uh, the clouds are so low that they seem to touch the ground Okay, sometimes this uh, cloud may touch uh, our uh, these uh, mobile towers also. Okay, high poses, then towers can be touched by such type of cloud. And the nimbus clouds are shapeless and uh, are shapeless masses of thick vapor. Okay, and the color is uh, black or dark gray. And it gives rain, you must remember. Okay, see here, this is nimbus. This figure number 11.2. And we have a color photograph also. See, here this is a nimbus cloud. Okay, it will give rainfall. And uh, we have uh, one more. So this is also nimbus cloud. And uh, here this is another photograph of nimbus. Okay, see this layer. Nimbus cloud. Uh, are you clear to have questions regarding different uh, types of clouds? No questions, sir. Okay, then uh, again, uh, let us continue. A, a combination, okay, a combination of these four basic types can be, uh, can give rise to the following types of clouds. So we have learned four families of cloud, and when we combine these four families of cloud, okay uh, so it can uh, classify the clouds can be classified in the following ways so here we have a uh, high clouds okay uh, that is uh, shirash shiro stratus shiro cumulus then middle cloud alto stratus alto cumulus low cloud that is strato cumulus and the strato nimbo stratus and the uh, fourth group is cloud with extensive particle development that is cumulus and the cumulonimbus so we have a chart also see here let us start from the ground so here uh, here uh, this up to here low clouds okay these are low clouds we have these uh, stratus okay stratus cloud and the stratocumulus cumulus okay and uh, we have uh, this uh, nimbo stratus so it gives rainfall here see here then uh, here from here to here so these are middle cloud okay uh, here we have alto cumulus and alto stratus okay so sun dimly visible in case of alto stratus and so these are these are high clouds uh, you have seen uh, this cirrus then cirrostratus okay so you may see hello phenomena around the sun 
and this is a zero cumulus and when you see zero cumulus the whole sky so it is also known as mackerel sky okay and uh, the fourth group is uh, what you call clouds with extensive uh, vertical development so these are cumulus and a cumulonimbus okay this here so this is this is what you call cumulonimbus okay cumulus you have seen this cumulus and this is cumulonimbus so it is very very thick okay it is very very thick more than two three kilometers thick so these are the different uh, groups of cloud uh, given in your textbook and again we have some photographs of those uh, cloud types so this photograph shows zero stratus is a type of high cloud okay this is zero stratus see zero stratus and uh, this is zero cumulus and uh, this is alto stratus okay see sun can be visible dim dimly okay this is the sun and this is alto stratus alto means height okay stratus cloud form at higher altitude that is alto stratus and uh, next we have this is alto cumulus cumulus cloud form at high altitudes that is alto cumulus and so this is also alto cumulus okay alto cumulus and this is uh, strato cumulus okay strato cumulus the whole cloud so it is strato cumulus cumulus cloud with layers and uh, this is also another photograph of strato cumulus seen from above okay and this is a uh, nimbo stratus it will give rainfall actually uh, when strato cumulus turns uh, black uh, so it becomes nimbo stratus and uh, it also will give rainfall okay so this is a uh, nimbo stratus and this is a uh, cumulonimbus seen from a distant place okay this is cloud with thick vertical development this is cumulonimbus, uh, and we have more photographs. Okay, this is another photograph showing cumulonimbus. See, okay, this is known as here this portion, this portion known as uh, anvil height. And uh, one more, okay, this is also cumulonimbus. Actually, cumulonimbus clouds are formed when we have thunderstorms also. and so this is another photograph okay showing cumulonimbus and with prominent anvil heads and the last one okay this is also cumulonimbus see here this pointed portion is known as anvil head so these are the different uh, types of cloud with their families remember we have four families of cloud okay and for each family the types of clouds are given here okay just see zero zero stratus read so any question from your side yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. Then, okay then uh let us stop here for today thank you very much for joining my class thank you sir